In this video, we will be covering how to prepare for competency-based interview questions. In our previous video, how to answer competency-based interview questions, we covered what competency-based interviews are, how to answer them, the STAR method, and how to apply it. In this video, we will cover the more practical steps you can take when approaching or preparing for a competency-based interview how to identify your personal core competencies, what competencies are needed for your role and what the interviewer will be looking for. We will focus on financial services at the end. The timestamps will now show on the screen and also are in the description below if you want to skip forward to the bit most relevant to yourself. Once you are confident you understand what competency based interviews are, why they are used and how to answer them, you'll surely be seeking more practical measures for you to put in place when you are sat in the interview room. So firstly, what should you expect at a competency-based interview? Prospects who are experts in graduate careers say, expect questions opening with, tell us about a time when you, give an example of, or describe how you. Some common examples of these questions include, describe a situation in which you led a team. Give an example of a time you handled conflict in the workplace. How do you maintain good working relationships with your colleagues? Tell me about a big decision you've made recently. How did it go for you? What has been your biggest achievement to date? Describe a project where you had to use different leadership styles to reach your goal. Tell me about a time when you achieved success, even when the odds were stacked against you. It is really important to pick out the key word or words within a question that will tell you exactly what the interviewer is looking for. For example, describe a situation where you asked to do something you'd never attempted previously. The key words here are describe, meaning the interviewer wants a good level of detail, and never attempted previously. This means it has to be something brand new, and make sure you emphasize this point. It doesn't have to be a job role that you're expected to do. It could be something relating to the team. For example, organize a team meeting or a training session. If you watched our previous video, you'd know how to employ the 5W and 1H method in conjunction with the STAR method to add greater detail to your answer. Using specific example and not smaller parts of different events to construct your answer. Another example, the question, give me an example of a challenge you faced in the workplace and tell me how you overcame it. The key words, example, they want a real event that has taken place, not what you would do, what you have done and how you overcame that situation. They are looking for a positive outcome, hence the word overcame. So by laying out the challenge and the circumstances surrounding it, you will impress the interviewer more. To do this more effectively, you will have to develop some personal core competencies. In the blog equivalent of this video, we do a deep dive into the 27 core competencies that come under the six major categories which are business focus, people focus, personal focus, change focus, analytical focus and quality focus. Whatever your industry or profession, the likelihood is that your core competencies of your role will come under one of these categories. You can use these examples to develop your own personal core competencies. It's really important to know and understand your own personal core competencies so that you can confidently answer any question that comes your way during an interview. So how do you identify them? Firstly, ask yourself a series of questions. For example, how would others describe you? What do you believe you're really good at? Why are you good at those things? What are some of your biggest achievements? What was required from you to achieve these? Don't just limit yourself to these questions, but allow yourself to explore different avenues that contribute to how you operate as a person. Remember to not solely focus on what core competencies you believe you have, but also to consider what ones you are required for your job. Much like when you are developing your personal competencies, 
it is important to ask yourself a series of new questions. Are you client facing? How often are you interacting with others? Does your job role require lots of analysis or research or is it more interpersonal and relationship orientated? What do the job descriptions say the ideal candidate possesses? For financial services individuals specifically, these could include for a financial advisor, influencing others. As a salesperson, you will have to influence your clients on a day-to-day -day basis, whether that be what investment to pursue or persuading them to remain invested with you or your company. Self-confidence. You'll need to be confident and decisive in every decision you are making is appropriate for your clients and confident in your ability to analyze each situation independently. Thoroughness. Linking to the last point, you'll need to be thorough to be confident. Going through everything meticulously is very important in this profession and industry, otherwise you'll get yourself into a lot of issue. For a power planner, Analytical. When looking at the steps taken in providing advice to clients, analysis skills ranks highly. It is important to understand the appropriate recommendations you are giving to a financial advisor by analysing the client's unique needs. Adaptability. There will be situations in which a client's desire or risk for change will be altered. It will be your job to remain adaptable and respond to these changes accordingly. Information gathering. As a power planner, it is at the core of your role to gather information effectively. Completing this competency efficiently, effectively and correctly will determine how successful you are at your job. For an administrator, Managing relationships. When you are an administrator, you need to be a people person. Ensuring the maintenance of relationships, both internally and externally, is of paramount importance. Communication written and verbal, when you're in a daily discourse with colleagues, it's important that you're keeping an open dialogue with them. Personal organization. Personal organisation is one of the most important aspects of an administrative role. If you're not organised, your job will become far more difficult and unorganised. For an equity release advisor, analysis and judgement. In equity release, you will have to use your judgement and analysis to understand your client's wants and needs and respond to them accordingly. Determination. As a salesperson, you'll need to stay determined to chase the deal down to the completion point. Managing relationships. As an equity release advisor, you'll have to deal with clients and their families, often in tricky situations. Therefore, you must successfully navigate through these situations to effectively carry out your role. Thank you for watching this video here on the Premier Jobs UK YouTube channel. You are really looking to bump up the level of content we are producing on interview advice, the job market and more. If you or anyone you know is looking for a job now or in the near future, I definitely recommend you suggest they get in contact with us, but also subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you put the notification bell on so that you're updated whenever a new video is published.